I was in a closet, locked for four hours with people who I would consider almost family, crying and weeping on me, begging for their lives. I understand what it's like to text my parents, goodbye, I might never ever get to see you again, I love you. I understand what it's like to fear for your life. And I don't think we should ever be discredited because of that. I don't think we should ever be silenced because we are just children. We're doing it so that our legislators, so that our lawmakers will make a change, so that they will take us seriously, so that they will not dismiss us any longer, so they won't reschedule, so they won't push us into another room as they dance around our questions. Because we came here prepared, and we're going to come to every single meeting with every single legislator prepared. We know what we want. We want gun reform. We want common sense gun laws. We want stronger mental health checks and background checks to work in conjunction. We want a better age limit. We want privatized selling to be completely reformed so you can't just walk into a building with $130 and walk out with an AR-15. Shooting survivors also shared wrenching stories and possible solutions at the White House. No mention from the president that a possible solution might be an all-out ban of semi-automatic weapons. That sort of move, after all, would put him at odds with the NRA and his core base. In fact, as Paul Hunter reports, Donald Trump hinted he sees more guns as part of the solution. Billed as a listening session, those who lived through the Parkland, Florida shooting and Newtown, Columbine and others had plenty to say. Should have been one school shooting and we should have fixed it. And I'm pissed because my daughter I'm not going to see again. I lost a best friend who's practically a brother. And I'm here to use my voice because I know he can't. Samuel Zeif, who was at that school in Parkland last Wednesday, underlined he's stunned by the lax gun laws in this country. Um, how is it that easy to buy this type of weapon? How do we not stop this after Columbine, after Sandy Hook? I'm sitting with a mother that lost her son. It's still happening. But what steps to take in a country that has long resisted toughening gun laws, even in the face of regular horror, Trump asked the question. What is your recommendation to stop it? Yes. The very first answer, give guns to teachers. And if it's not the teachers, you could have people that work on the campus. A custodian could be an undercover policeman. Someone, Someone in the lunchroom, in the he said, or a guidance counselor, anyone. But when that alert goes off and they put the kids in the closets and they put the kids under the desks, then I want the teacher to open that safe, pull out that firearm, and be ready to do what needs to be done while you're waiting for the helicopters and the SWAT teams to come. It's called concealed carry. Trump seemed to suggest he's all for it. If you had a teacher with who was adept at firearms, they could very well end the attack very quickly. It was the mother of a child killed at Newtown who countered. It's not personally something that I support. Rather than arm them with a firearm, I would rather arm them with the knowledge of how to prevent these acts from happening in the first place. The real issue, said Zeif, easy access to guns. These are not weapons of defense. These are weapons of war. And I just... I still can't fathom that I'm myself am able to purchase one. Without being specific, Trump pledged action. A photographer snapped a photo of what appeared to be talking points for Trump. Number five, I hear you. Paul Hunter, CBC News, Washington. In the past week, Trump has faced harsh words from some student activists. One of the most prominent voices belongs to Parkland shooting survivor David Hogg. President Trump, you control the House of Representatives, you control the Senate, and you control the executive. You haven't taken a single bill for mental health care or gun control and passed it, and that's pathetic. Now, Hogg and other Parkland students have been attacked as so-called crisis actors. Those are plants or fakes who travel to shootings to promote partisan political agendas. 17-year-old Hogg... I witnessed this Hogg event. Why are you guys doing this to me? I I'm trying to be as well-spoken as possible because these politicians won't. 
So that's him trying to shrug it off. But the crisis actor accusation got a lot of traction extremely quickly in conservative and right-wing circles. Donald Trump's son, for instance, liked the story on Twitter. Now, researchers say the conspiracy was amplified online by a network of Kremlin-linked Twitter bots. In fact, Russian bots were active within an hour of the Parkland shooting, trying to deepen U.S. political divisions. So what is a bot? Simply put, it's a Twitter account on autopilot. The goal is to gain Twitter and just magnify a message. For example, hashtag true pundit, a site that's pushing the conspiracy theories about Parkland shooting survivor David Hogg. A bot might like a tweet with that hashtag and retweet it to its followers, which also include bots. Those bots then also retweet it to their followers, and so on and so on, creating a tsunami of identical tweets within seconds. If prominent celebrities or influencers pick it up, say Donald Trump Jr., that engages huge numbers of real users and the trend kicks into overdrive. So how do you spot a bot? Well, they tweet like mad. 50 plus posts a day is a serious red flag. They often lack personal details with obscure or stock profile pics, and they rarely do much besides direct retweets. But beware, human or partially automated accounts known as cyborgs are also just part of this network. They blend in with real users and are a lot harder to spot. And by the way, according to one site that monitors accounts linked to Russian influence campaigns, mentions of hashtag true pundit have increased 2,200% over the past 48 hours. But True Pundit is old news for Russia's bot army. Its latest craze now is something called hashtag Twitter lockout, which started after Twitter suspended thousands of accounts. That mass suspension was a purge of those suspected bots. Twitter has taken to asking for phone numbers to verify real humans are behind accounts. But this is making some real humans mad, who say it all, all that's actually been accomplished is purging political opinion. Prominent right-wing users have complained of losing hundreds of followers overnight, and they're calling it a Twitter lockout. And so now, Andrew, that hashtag uh, Twitter lockout has been trending, apparently, with a little help from, you guessed it, bots again. And so it goes on and on.